Let's kick it off with the big news. Whether you want to believe in coronavirus or not, it is real. And today, the United States passed the 10,000 coronavirus deaths. And experts are saying that that number is probably undercounting things because apparently many deaths in the US have been labeled as pneumonia or influenza when they were likely coronavirus. Now, as America reaches the hottest week yet of this epidemic, states around the country have been begging the federal government to help them find ventilators for their overcrowded hospitals. But because the federal government took so long to react to this crisis, President Trump just doesn't have enough ventilators to go around. What he can give people, though, is some unsolicited medical advice. President Trump says he thinks doctors should use the drug hydroxychloroquine to treat patients who've tested positive. That's hydroxychloroquine and azithromycin. Uh, and again, you have to go through uh, your medical people, get the approval. Uh, but... Uh, I've seen things that I sort of like, so what do I know? I'm not a doctor. I'm not a doctor. Okay, here's what I don't get. Trump is acknowledging he's not a doctor, while legitimate doctors who could answer these questions are standing right there next to him. Why are we getting his opinion at all? Imagine if you went in for a checkup and there was just some random dude behind your doctor giving his opinion like, if you ask me, it looks like you got some of that AIDS cancer. But what do I know? I'm just a guy who hangs out here. I do have to give some credit to Trump, though, for at least giving us a disclaimer that he's not a doctor. I mean, he doesn't normally do that. In fact, he should end all of his coronavirus press conferences like a pharmaceutical ad. He's just come out like, Donald Trump is not a doctor and his advice should not be taken seriously. If you have an erection lasting longer than four hours, please let Donald Trump know, because that's pretty cool. Now, before you get depressed by the fact that America is being led by someone who knows less about medicine than Dr. Pepper, there is still a lot of good news out there. Don't lose hope. For instance, in Europe, although Spain and Italy are still reporting more than 10,000 new infections each day, their corona numbers are finally slowing down, which could be a sign that the worst has passed. And South Korea, they're superstars. They've reported only 47 new cases yesterday. And with fewer than 200 deaths out of a population of 51 million people, South Korea has basically emerged as maybe the only nation to have handled the pandemic with near complete success. And I mean, let's be honest, South Korea was always gonna beat Corona because from what I can tell, everyone in that country has a basement inside their basement. So I mean, if you're the virus, good luck finding a South Korean person. But maybe the best news of all is that there are rumors that Netflix might be dropping a new episode of Tiger King, people. That's right, Jeff Lowe told a fan online that he had been filmed for a new episode scheduled to drop this week. Yeah. And when has Jeff Lowe ever lied? I mean, if you can't trust a 65-year-old man who dresses like a rebellious teenager, who can you trust? And I guess this is how low the bar has gotten for what counts as good news right now. We find out there's more episodes about deranged murderers and people being cruel to animals, and we're like, yes! Oh, some good news. Thank you, Lord. And I'm gonna be honest, guys. I am terrified of this news because every episode of Tiger King has been crazier than the previous episode. So what's gonna happen in this new episode? Are we gonna find out Carol Baskin and her husband faked his death to get the insurance money and he's been secretly living inside one of those tigers all along? Ah! But let's move on. Over the weekend, we got a major update from the CDC. After months of telling us that only sick people should be wearing masks, the CDC now says everyone should cover their faces with masks made from cloth, like shirts or bandanas or scarves. Because apparently, even people who don't have symptoms of coronavirus can unknowingly spread the coronavirus. We are all coronavirus. Sounds like an inspirational message. Even if you don't feel corona, corona can feel you. So basically, anytime we go outside for essentials, all of us should have a bandana or something on our face. The CDC is gonna have everybody looking like broke-ass Mortal Kombat characters. Get over here! Whoa, 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 dude, dude, coronavirus. Not, not that close, just get over there. But still, folks, that's a major shift from the CDC, and it's already having a big impact. For instance, Joe Biden said that from now on, he will wear a mask in public because it's important to follow the science. Meanwhile, 
President Trump has said that these guidelines are voluntary and he will probably not wear a mask, which, let's be honest, doesn't surprise anyone. Trump is all about appearance. He's not gonna be wearing a mask. He doesn't care about safety. In fact, the only way they can get him to wear a mask is if his aides trick him. Yeah, this is gonna trick him like he's a child. No, Mr. President, it's, it's not a mask. It's a border wall for your face. So viruses are like the Mexicans of germs. I got it. While the U.S. is bracing for an explosion of new coronavirus infections, the White House is also bracing for more backlash. You see, they haven't been listening to coronavirus warnings that they've been receiving for months. Just today, Axios reported that Peter Navarro, Trump's trade advisor, wrote a memo back in January where he warned very accurately that if America didn't take immediate action to stop the coronavirus, it would break out in the United States and it would kill hundreds of thousands of people. And on top of that, he also predicted that it would destroy the economy. So Trump got warnings from the HHS, got warnings from his intelligence agencies, and even got warnings from his own economic advisors, and he didn't heed any of those warnings. Basically, if there's ever a warning, Trump just will ignore it. Yeah, coronavirus, check engine lights, I bet even choking hazards. Half of Mike Pence's job is just pulling Legos out of Trump's throat. It was a yellow piece, so I thought it was a piece of cheese. I know, Mr. President, easy mistake to make, sir. Now, it turns out Trump has been ignoring so many warnings that the Daily Show investigation team managed to get some of Donald Trump's voicemails, and it turns out he was even ignoring warnings from coronavirus itself. You have four messages in your inbox. Message one. Hey, Donald, this is coronavirus calling. Been trying to contact you for a little while now. Wanted to let you know I'm going to be branching out of China into the United States soon. Uh, I'm sure your advisors have already told you all about me, but just wanted to confirm my schedule with you and see if you have any plans for me. Talk soon. Like, really, really soon. Message two. Uh, hey, Donald, me again. I just saw you on TV saying that I'm not coming. Uh, maybe you're not checking messages, but I totally am coming. Like, I've booked the flights and everything, so give me a call or something, man. I'm starting to think you're ignoring me. Message three. Hello, Mr. Trump. This is Cynthia from the Adoption Agency. I just wanted to let you know that we can't take your son, Eric, because he's a grown man. I'm so sorry about the bad news. Message four. Yo, Donald, it's Corona. I'm at the airport. I thought you'd have someone here to meet me, but it doesn't seem like you've planned for my arrival. So I'm just going to hop into an Uber pool with some strangers and make my way into the city. Um, Let me know your sketch. I'm pretty free. I'm just going to go to a party tonight and then 20 parties tomorrow night, and then 400 parties the night after. So hit me up later, bro. Let's talk about black people. They're like white people, but with seasoning. In America, black people have had a long history of getting the short end of the stick. From slavery, to Jim Crow, to the criminal justice system, to the sunken place. But when it came to the coronavirus, it seemed like for once, black people were catching a break. A lot of these viruses were immune to. Yeah. Because our skin is radiant and our skin comes from the sun. Mm -hmm. That is our superpower, melanin. Black people, we will not get the coronavirus because we got a little thing in our body where we call the melanin. Minorities can't catch it. We sure. They Say that one more time. Minorities can't catch it. Minorities can't catch coronavirus. No. Why do you say? Why do you believe Name that? Name one. I don't know, but it could Not happen. <laughs> Name one, though. It could happen. Name one if of us. Yeah, when this whole pandemic was just kicking off, many people, many people thought coronavirus was something that just didn't involve black people. Sort of like Tennis Elbow or Tiger King. Very quickly, we've come to learn that not only can black people get coronavirus, it turns out that black people are being hit harder than anyone else in America right now. 
With the rate of infection increasing in cities across America, there are alarming new statistics showing the pandemic is taking an especially heavy toll on minority communities. African Americans account for 41 percent of COVID deaths in Michigan, though only 14 percent of residents. In Chicago, black residents represent 72 percent of deaths, but just 30 percent of the population. Louisiana's population is 32 percent black, which accounts for about 70 percent of coronavirus deaths. The disparity uh, in deaths among African Americans there is startling. The data is clear. Coronavirus is disproportionately impacting and killing people of color. That's right. As America has become the epicenter of the coronavirus worldwide, black America has become the epicenter of the virus's worst effects. And this has become such a major problem that even President Trump has taken notice. In the U.S., African Americans are dying at a much higher rate from COVID-19 than other groups. President Trump calls it a real problem and a tremendous challenge. This is something that's come up, and I don't mean by a little bit. I mean many times. It's a real thing. Now, why is it that the African American community is so much, you know, numerous times more than everybody else? Why is it three or four times uh, more so for the black community as opposed to other people, it doesn't make sense. And I don't like it. And we're going to have statistics over the next probably two to three days. It almost sounds like Trump is jealous that black people get coronavirus more than anyone else. Just because of the way he said it. How come black people are getting it and not me? What do they have that I don't have? Is it swag? Is that what it is? Is it caused by swag? No, but look, obviously I'm joking. I'm totally joking, man. If anything, it's refreshing. It's honestly refreshing to see President Trump so concerned about the black community. But, but when he says it doesn't make sense that coronavirus is hitting black Americans the hardest, it's actually the opposite, right? Because when you look at the systemic and socioeconomic factors facing black people in America, it makes complete sense. You see, overall, black people are less likely to have health insurance. Black people are more likely to have pre-existing conditions like asthma and diabetes, and those things make coronavirus more lethal. Black people are also more likely to be in service jobs where you can't work from home and you have to come into contact with lots of people every day. And of course, there's always just straight up racism that affects black people as well. For example, one study has found that black people have been less likely to be offered a coronavirus test by their doctor, even if they're exhibiting the same symptoms as white patients. Yeah. So while almost every industry around the world is shut down, it looks like racism is still considered an essential service. And racism is even affecting whether or not black people can protect themselves and cover their faces when they go outside. Jody Armour is a law professor at USC Law School. He and other academics believe wearing masks can pose a problem for people of color. The fear of being mistaken for a dangerous criminal may be greater than the fear of contracting COVID-19. Wearing protective masks while black is a concern just like driving while black is. This officer right here behind us, he just followed us from outside, told us that we cannot wear masks. There's a presidential order, there's a state order, and he's just, and he's following us right now to the store. We're being asked to leave for being safe. Come on, man, this is some bullshit. If black people don't wear a mask in public, what's gonna happen? People are gonna say they're endangering public health. But then if black people do wear masks, then they're treated like they're preparing for a mission in Red Dead Redemption or something. Like, what do you expect black people to do, hmm? At this point, the only safe way for black people to cover their faces in public is to try and disguise themselves as a white person. And I'm not talking about code switching. I'm talking about actually putting on a white person's face as your mask. Some people will be suspicious, but it'll work. Hey, you look white, but there's something off. Say something only a white person would say. Uh, I wish Kamala Harris was back in this race. Checks out. I'll see you at hockey practice, buddy. So look, the unfortunate truth is that the black community is being slammed by coronavirus right now. But in a way, it's not because there's anything special about coronavirus. It's because any widespread crisis in America is bound to hit the most vulnerable and disadvantaged groups the hardest. And yes, I know this is depressing, especially right now. I mean, you don't wanna deal with coronavirus and racism at the same time. 
It's like two Marvel villains coming into one movie. We don't have enough heroes. What we do have is real life black people showing how resilient they are. And one of the videos that gave me the most joy is this viral video of a group of black people throwing a social distancing block party that I won't lie, brought me a little bit of joy. Ah, yes. I remember when the only thing in the air we had to worry about was 24 carats of magic. Those were the good old days. You know, whenever we talk about coronavirus, we always think about the lives that will be lost, the economy, and people's jobs. But the one thing we also can't ignore is how it's gonna affect people's relationships. So for today, I thought, you know what, let's change gears and focus on something a little different in our brand new segment, Love in the Time of Corona. Now, the coronavirus outbreak has been amazing for Ying Ying and Lili's relationship. Yeah, because with no one around, those two panda bears have started having more sex than Donald Trump whenever Melania's out of town. I'm joking, of course. He doesn't care if she's in town or not. But it turns out, for us human panda bears, the coronavirus hasn't been as beneficial for our love lives. Splitting up together. Divorce rates spiked in China in the wake of the coronavirus. So is the U.S. next. We are seeing a pressure cooker of disaster for couples. Business is booming right now for Eleanor Alter, a prominent divorce lawyer in the epicenter of the pandemic, New York City. I'm seeing an uptick in calls. People calling at all hours of the night seeking legal advice. I'm getting a lot of calls about people who are in close quarters with a person that they were planning to divorce perhaps this year and it hasn't happened yet, wondering if they can go forward with a divorce during the pandemic. Yeah, coronavirus is the worst thing to happen to marriages since the invention of the pool boy. Why always gotta be so sexy when you're raking those leaves in the pool, pool boy? And getting divorced is already a stressful experience. But getting divorced when you can't leave, sweet Lord, that must be the worst. Just imagine if you lived in like a New York City apartment, what do you, what do, you do then? Huh? Okay, fine. You, you can have the bed and I'm gonna sleep in the microwave. So yeah, because of coronavirus, divorce lawyers are seeing more business than the guy selling glow sticks at Coachella. And if you're wondering, why is this happening? Well, it's because quarantine is showing a lot of couples that they might love each other, but they don't like each other. When it comes to the quarantine, the biggest problem couples are have is just the amount of pressure that the relationship is putting on each other. Think about it. Normally you're around your partner for maybe five hours a day a week, but now that's tripled. When we don't have as much distraction going on, um, we tend to hyper focus on certain things that, um, little, little things that bother us. Part of the reason that could be one in three people surveyed say they do not shower or bathe every day anymore. Also, 15% of respondents say they do not get dressed out of their pajamas. He wanders through the house and continues to talk to me when I'm on the phone. Can't be in your bathrobe. And those are the things, like the little things I have to be aware of because the camera really covers the whole space. Oh man. I. I really feel bad for this woman. Think about it, her husband is walking around in a bathrobe while she's trying to work over Skype. That is so embarrassing, because that's her job. Like imagine if you were in your boss's office and then your spouse just walks in, shirtless, covered in Cheetos. Honey, do you have a towel? Excuse me, my boss is here, can't you see? Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Boss, do you have a towel? The Cheetos, they get everywhere, look at this. I see why people are getting tired of each other. Like just because you've committed your life to someone, doesn't mean you want to be committed 24 seven. In fact, after coronavirus ends, I think marriage vows need to be updated. Do you take this man to heaven to hold, but for like an hour in the morning and then maybe three hours at night when you watch TV? Now, don't get it twisted. Coronavirus isn't breaking up every couple. There are many lovebirds out there who are taking the initiative and turning quarantine time into quality time. You may be stuck at home, but that doesn't mean date night is canceled. One couple used their free time to recreate the iconic final dance scene from the 1980s film, Dirty Dancing. The Jones family is used to being creative, turning famous paintings into their own works of art. 
quarantine style, like American Gothic and Washington Crossing the Delaware. Grant recreated date nights around the house, a casino, sports bar, bowling with paper towel pins in their living room. I think my favorite part of the date was the dance club, which was our bathroom, which when we went in there, he had music blaring and then he like turned the lights on and off. Okay, now that guy, that guy deserves all the brownie points in the world. He made a full nightclub in his bathroom for his woman? Wow, that's love. And this thing was super realistic. He even charged her $18 for a vodka cranberry and then stole her purse when she got drunk. That is commitment. Before we go, as always, I would like to remind you that as America reaches peak corona infections, the doctors, nurses, and first responders in this country need our help. So please, go to Thrive Global's First Responders First and donate whatever you can to help them get the masks, gloves, and gowns that they need to save lives. And if you wanna help in New York City specifically, please go to the New York Mayor's Fund COVID-19 response and donate there. Stay safe out there, wash your hands. Remember, you can freeze your toilet paper to make it last longer, and I'll see you again tomorrow.